There's, these things are actually very similar to each other if you actually look at it. Both have foldings or mountain ranges forming, except one of them, since the mountain range is forming in the middle of the ocean, you end up getting something that we call an island arc. Both of them have trust faults and volcanic fissures fed, fed by magma chambers, which are basically formed by the melting plate, which rises through magma plumes, melting the crust in between to form those, those magma chambers. And by the way, the thing that I forgot to mention is because, because these plates are involving the ocean, the plate is going to be moist and therefore easier to melt, and that's why they form magma very, very easy as they subduct underneath the other one. Notice both have trenches because they both have subduction zones involving the oceans. Now, of course, this trench on the bottom is going to be much deeper than the trench on the top because you already were very deep since you're talking about the, the middle of the abyssal plane that's colliding here, two pieces of oceanic crust hitting against each other. And so that trench is going to be even deeper than the other ones, which is why near Japan you get places like the Marinas Trench, which is going to be a collision between two very deep oceanic basins, and you're going to create a very deep trench. And of course, we talked about both of them creating earthquakes as well. Now, a very similar type of thing, but will happen when continents hit other continents. So at first, you might have something that looks like a continent versus ocean collision, but if there's a continent in that oceanic plate, in other words, if, if the, at the back of that oceanic crust, you have a continent there, then once this oceanic crust subducts completely, what's going to end up happening is what happens here. And the continent will basically hit each other, and you're going to make a massive collision between continental blocks. And you're going to get the folding of the both of them, and you're going to have these very, very, very steep mountains forming in both sides. So, And then they will compete against each other to see which one is going to subduct underneath. Probably the one that was already subducting as the, as the subduction zone of the ocean crust that was ahead of it. Um, but the continental crust will basically merge with the other one, even as the bottom of it actually subducts, the top will actually be carried and basically merge with the other one in a massive collision that makes even more trust faults than you did or had before. You're going to crack these rocks very badly because of all, all the collisions that are taking place here. And so you're going to have very, very, very steep rock, rock faults. And you can see this happening here as well, how much the actual rock is actually going to be folding. And you're going to be cracking this both crust and in several pieces. Now, you're not going to get as much magma formation as you would on the other side. You might, you might some, sometimes occasionally get a volcano forming, but because this crust does not have water in it, it will have less tendency to melt as a subduct underneath. And so it will make magma plumes which are not so hot, and it will have trouble um, actually melting through that very, very thick mountain range that forms. And so what has, ends up happening is that you might get underground magma chambers that never actually rise to the surface. Now these magma chambers moving around can still cause earthquakes, but they very rarely will turn into volcanoes because they would have to actually, to become a volcano, they would have to melt through a very, very steep mountain range. That's the biggest difference between the rock falls that happen during the other two collisions and the rock that happens between these two collisions. First of all, you form two folds, one on each continental crust that's colliding, and these folds will tend to be steeper than the other ones. So you found a parallel line of mountain ranges in between, and those both will be very steep, which not basically does not allow the volcanism to reach the top, and usually the magma plume is not as hot because you don't have a moistened up subducting plate, because there's no water involved here anymore. But you're still going to have very massive earthquakes, because of both the earthquakes that happen in the, in the actual line that's colliding, so both the earthquakes that happen because of the friction between the plates, so the deep earthquakes, and the earthquakes that happen when these all one, each one of these trust faults actually happens. In other words, when a rock actually cracks and bends back to normal after thousands of years of being folded, like you see here in the bottom. Now, sometimes you will get some melting of the plates in between the uh, actual zones, and and sometimes you will have in between the actual plates the remnants of oceanic crust in between. So, and you, because of all the bending that's taking pl place, sometimes you also have warming of the surface, and you're going to have some melting uh, that happens with the rock. So, all these rocks are going to be changing because they're going to be melting, and they're going to be folding beyond recognition from what the rocks they were before. And so, you're going to have lots of different kinds of folds. And sometimes, because they're colliding dead on, you force them to move slide past each other sometimes as well, because... But they feel that they have no ch no choice. They're locked in place, but you keep pushing them against each other. So sometimes they will fold 
slide past each other. So sometimes collision faults actually become transform faults, which is the next type of fault that we have to talk about. But before we do that, let's do a quick review of all the different kinds of collisions we just talked about. Now, over here on the north, the, the back of North America, all right, or here on the back of Chile, you have a plate of the ocean that's actually hitting the North American and South American continents. And because of that, you see how you get this mountain range around the entire edge of, of the Americas. And we call this the Rockies and the Andes, right? And they stretch across the whole thing. And that's happening because of the mid-ocean ridge in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is pushing the continent this way from the other side. So this plate is moving to the left while that plate is moving to the right. So the ultimate consequence is that they both will hit each other. And here's you have the example of that. You have the Peru-Chile Trench, which formed when the Nazca Plate, which is the plate down here, that plate right there, is... Which, by the way, there's another divergence zone happening here, which, and then that's why, and then you have the divergence zone coming from the Atlantic over there. So that means these plates are moving against each other, and you're going to have the plate coming this way and a plate coming that way, hitting each other, forming a trench, and a mountain in between, which is the Andes. And you have volcanoes and earthquakes and everything we talked about happening because of this. Now, another example is when two continents hit each other. And you, for example, when the edge of the Euro Eurasian plate, which is actually covered by ocean, hits the Pacific plate, which is obviously an oceanic plate, you're going to get a trench forming in between and a rising of the one of the other plates, which is actually going to be forming an uh, island chain, which we recognize as Japan. But you actually see several of these things. You, hear the, you see the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, the si Siberian Islands in, in North Asia, part of Russia, and then you get to Japan. And then if, if you keep going down, you're going to hit the... Philippines, and eventually you're going to hit New Zealand, and all this large chain of islands here, it's all formed because of this process of ocean versus ocean hitting each other. And finally, another example of a continent hitting a continent, and this was when, for example, India, which is a subcontinent, is hitting the Eurasian plate, you basically are having a collision between two plates, you're going to have those very, very bad thrust faults we talked about, severe folding of the rocks, and two lines of mountain ranges next to each other, which are very steep, which we call the Himalayas. And so you see the different types of collision events that happen. And remember, the convergent boundaries, you, you have rock faults, rock faults, which include truss faults and volcanic fissures. You also have tr trenches of subduction zones, in the, and trenches will show up anytime you have oceans involved, which will actually make the, the plates moist and easier to melt. And you're going to have the formation of magma plumes, especially in those oceanic collisions. And you're going to have the, the filling of magma chambers, which can then form volcanoes, uh, which can die as the folding goes away from the magma chamber, and it causes the, the dead magma chambers to be left behind. And because of all the pressure and friction between the plates, as well as the truss faults that form, you get in these rocks, bending these rocks beyond the point they can take, and when they actually break, you form things like earthquakes. So these are f common features of convergent boundaries. Now, sometimes when you form plates to move against each other, they actually slide past each other, and other times they slide past each other because of different movement of the magma that's happening underneath. And remember, this also happens at the mid-ocean ridge sometimes. So transform boundaries will happen in three different scenarios. They happen close to divergent boundaries, close to convergent boundaries, and also randomly throughout the crust. But transform bodies will happen every any time that either because of a dead on collision or because the splitting is not necessarily even across the entire ridge or because two plates are forced to slide past each other, you're going to have transform bodies. Now, transform bodies happen like this. You see a plate going this way and a plate going that way. And you see how it looks in the ground. You see how an earthquake is actually formed. And you, and you have this... This whole piece here is a piece of the earth moving that way, and this piece is moving this way, and so you have a transform boundary. Now, the most common feature of a transform boundary is this large fault line in between the plates. So you're going to have one plate moving one way, one plate moving the other. This is what we call, by the way, the San Andreas Fault up there in California. And this is an example of a transform boundary that's happening because this plate is actually sliding past in this kind of motion while this plate is sliding past in this kind of motion so they're kind of actually going against each other but since they're locked in place they're, they're they were forced to kind of slide past each other and that's a type an example of this and then you're going to get uh, something that's called a strike and slip fault strike and slip fault is, a, is the type of fault line that happens typically in in these types of boundaries where the rock basically is forced to 
slip past each other and crack and form these patterns that you see in, a, in thing here. But remember, this will be common both in convergent boundaries when the boundaries can't really go against each other anymore, so they're, they're forced to slide past each other, or in places of the world when the boundaries are apparently some moving against each other, but not directly towards each other, or near oceanic ridges. Look here, for example, that oceanic ridge thing we talked about. This piece of the lithosphere here is going to be originally they were all together but you can see how one piece was forced to move that way more than this piece moved that way and so you had basically you have differential growth with of the boundary right because maybe because the divergent zone of the magma is here on this particular plate but on that plate the divergent zone of magma is there and so you have a differentiation because you're having a transform boundary happen at the same time so you see the fracture zones are not necessarily aligned, and you see that the ridge is not necessarily aligned, and this is happening because one plate is moving to the side more than the other, and you have a transform hap boundary happening. And this is actually sometimes will cause the ridge to separate, and basically this will cause that piece of continent that's sitting over here and that piece of continent sitting over here to travel more than this piece of continent that's here or this piece of continent that's here. So the same kind of transform scenario will show up in the continent as well. Transform boundaries are also known from their large earthquakes because as rocks slide past each other and they cause friction in between them, sometimes the rocks get caught and they're forced to bend instead of move. And so as they bend bef too much and eventually they have to crack and buckle, as they return back to their normal shape after they crack and slip, that releases a massive earthquake as well. So transform boundaries are also known for their earthquakes. In this picture, we're actually putting them all together so you can see how they look like and see all the boundaries in one. So you see when two oceanic plates hitting each other in this corner here, and you're going to see the island arc forming, volcanic mountains, the trench between ocean and ocean. That's an ocean versus ocean collision. Here you have a divergent boundary happening in the middle of the ocean, and you can see how this piece over there moved more than this piece over here, so you have basically a transform boundary happen there, so there you have a transform boundary right in between here. You also have an uh, ocean versus continent collision happening right here. And you see how this ocean across is subducting underneath. You have the truss fault happening here. You have the uh, rising and you're causing of the, of the volcanic mountains and things like that happening over there. You also see over here another transform boundary because maybe this piece of the continent cracked. And you also have one piece moving sliding past this way and a piece moving past that way. So you have... A continental rift zone forming here because of a transform boundary and eventually you're going to have this magma becoming a new rift in the continent that's happening there and so because of a transform boundary you're actually causing the the continent to rift and you have a new forming rift which eventually will look the same way that the rift zone will look so i like this picture because it's actually putting them all together and you can see several boundaries happening now one more thing you see here is the formation of a hot spot now you notice that this is a piece of lava that's seeping through, but it's not seeping through the entire crust. You don't see an another divergent zone happening. This is just one seamount that's rising above the sea level, causing a shield volcano or a hot spot. We didn't talk about that yet, and we'll do that in a short video after this one. But before we do that, let's do a quick review of the plates that we talked about before and notice these boundaries all around the world. Notice, for example, that over here you have... A divergent boundary, and that's because of that mid ocean ridge. So, that mid ocean ridge around the entire thing is going to cause this divergent boundary. Now, remember that this divergent boundary, because of the other boundaries that which are interacting, maybe this piece is moving more than another piece, and that's going to cause actual transform boundaries also. And so, along the entire thing, you have, you're going to have transform boundaries which separate the fracture zones and create those things. So, this is very common along the entire edge. And you have the same thing happen here on another divergent boundary is making the Indian larger. You have another one of up here and so forth. And you have a, one, another one up here in the plate and in between the Antarctic plate and the Pacific plate. So the Pacific Ocean is growing a little bit. Now because of these plates are is stretching, it will force other plates to compress. So you see that happening on uh, several zones over here to collide or compress against each other. And that's why you get those island arms, tire thing here, volcanoes, earthquakes, all of this happening around the edge of the Pacific. Now, notice in this case, that, that particular plate is colliding. Yes, they're both coming this against each other, but they got locked in place, so they were forced to slide past each other. So you have a transform boundary happening there. The same thing happened here. 
and you have another one of those convergent boundaries up here between the Indian plate and the, and the Eurasian plate, and that's what we call a continent versus continent collision, and so forth. So you see the different boundaries around the world, and now it makes sense to you. You can see visually what they look like that we talked about before. Now, why do these plates move? What is causing these plates to move? All right, so let's talk about that on the next video.